the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and escape into Egypt, and stay there till I tell you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today we celebrate a very unique feast. In fact, it's very unique in that it only pertains to the Archdiocese of Cape Town because it's under the patronage, patronage of Our Lady of the Flight into Egypt that the Archdiocese is dedicated to you. And so throughout the Archdiocese, we celebrate this feast, unless, unlike the rest of the world that will be celebrating the fifth Sunday of the year. We pray, especially today, for our Archdiocese, especially in this time of COVID and this time when we are called to re-establish ourselves, to re-evangelize ourselves, to re-revitalize ourselves, as we go forward in building the Church of Cape Town from the, what, the, what, the effects that COVID has had on the local church. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins and bring us to the last in life. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our strength and our hope, you led your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, to safety from the sword of Herod. Grant that through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, we may be delivered from every evil and so come to serve you in justice, justice and holiness of life. Thus we are through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Israel took his journey with all that he had, and he came to Bathsheba and offered sacrifices to God of his father Isaac, and God spoke to Israel in visions of the night, and said, 
Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will bring you up again, and Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. And Jacob set out from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried to Jacob their father, their little ones, and their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry them. They also took their cattle and their goods, which they had gained in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt. Jacob and all his offspring with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, all, these, all, all his offspring he brought with him into Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will dwell in the land and safely pasture. Find your delight in the Lord who grants your heart's desires. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. The Lord takes note of the days of the blameless. Their heritage will last forever. They shall not be put to shame in evil days. In time of famine, they shall have their full. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you may abide forever. For indeed, the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his faithful. The unjust shall be whipped out, out forever and the descendants of the wicked destroyed. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. But from the Lord comes the salvation of the just. They are stronghold in times of distress. The Lord helps them and rescues them rescues and saves them from the wicked because they take refuge in him from the lord comes the salvation of the just a reading from the letter of saint paul to the ephesians blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. For he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which is set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, in him according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to the counsel of his will. We who first hoped in Christ have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance 
until we acquire possession of it to praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord God. When the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, shake the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt have I called my son. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise! Take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother, and they went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus reigned over Judea, in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that was spoken of the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the solemnity of Our Lady of the Flight into Egypt, which is the title of our cathedral. We call it St. Mary's Cathedral, but its proper name is Our Lady of the Flight into Egypt. And it was under this title that the Archdiocese was dedicated. And so today, as we come together, we pray especially for the Church of Cape Town, that the Lord may continue to guide us, that he may continue to inspire us, that he may continue to fill with his Holy Spirit our bishops, the priests, the deacons, the consecrated people, the people of God, who make up the Church of Cape Town in the different parishes. And we pray especially, especially in this time of pandemic, that as we come out, start hopefully to come out of this pandemic, that we may find innovative ways to re-establish the Church, to build up the Church. First of all, by coming back to Holy Mass, to come and give praise and worship to God for being with us during these last two years. It's been difficult. It's been difficult for us as a church, difficult for us as a parish, difficult for us in our personal life. Some of us even got COVID. And thankfully, we got through it. Others got COVID and have gone to the eternal reward. And on this day, we remember them 
in a special way, especially those from our parish who have gone to the eternal rest, having succumbed to this virus. But this feast today is a feast of hope. It's a feast that we put our faith and our trust in the Lord. And when we look at the readings for today, there's a wonderful analogy between the first reading and the gospel. In that first reading, we find Israel, also known as Jacob, who was the son of Isaac, fleeing from the promised land, from Canaan, and going down to Egypt, because where they were living, there was that great famine. And God, in his wisdom, had already sent one of the sons of Jacob, Joseph, to Egypt, although it was through terrible circumstances that had to happen, because we know, we know the story. We know that the brothers of Joseph had thrown him into a pit, and when they had seen wandering travelers going past, they sold him, they drew him out of the pit, and they sold him to the, to the wanderers who were going to Egypt. And that's how Joseph ended up in Egypt. But he had worked himself up in, in Egypt till he had come here and become quite an important person. And that is why Pharaoh sends chariots to Bathsheba to, to collect the family of Joseph. But we know as we go on that having fled from Canaan, what was going to happen down a couple of centuries when the people of Israel found themselves in slavery. And again, God intervenes and he calls them out of Egypt through Moses. He had calls on Moses and Aaron to, to lead the people out of Egypt to the promised land. And they did that journey. He called them out of their slavery in Egypt. And I'll say there's the analogy of the gospel, where we again find someone God sent us, his son, Jesus Christ, as a baby, having to flee his home country, because the ruler who should be protecting him wanted to kill him. And so Joseph and Mary and Jesus have to go and they have to flee their home country and become refugees in Egypt. They have to go through the Sinai Desert and they arrive in Egypt. And again, what does happen? That after Herod had died, in that dream, Joseph gets called to take Mary and Jesus and go back to the house of Israel, go back to his promised land. And again, God calling Jesus, not so much to relieve the people of Israel from a physical slavery, but something far greater and far, far more deadly. And that is Jesus coming back to Israel to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace to the people of Israel and relieve them from another slavery, the slavery of sin. And the wonderful thing is that Jesus, when he dies on the cross and he rises again, he has that victory over sin. Because sin had brought death into the world. And by the resurrection, Jesus has that victory over death. And so we come to celebrate this day today, where we are benefactors of Jesus' resurrection, benefactors of the people, the apostles, and the other people that Jesus sent out to bring the good news. And God calls us today through the church 
out of slavery, calls us out of our own slavery to sin, because that is the will of God. God's will is for us to be free of the slavery of sin, and we are called to follow Christ. But yes, at times we fail. Yes, we get re reconciled with God through the sacrament of confession, but then we find ourselves falling again into sin. But this time we don't despair. In fact, we put our faith and courage in the Lord and we follow the Lord because he calls us again and again to free us from the slavery of sin. This is the wonderful everlasting covenant that God creates with us through his Son, Jesus Christ. And so today, as we celebrate this, this feast, we ask the Lord to be with us, that he may call us to overcome all the adverse things that have happened to us over the last two years. A call for us today is to build up the church again, to be reinfused in ourselves to our worship of God by making sure that we come to be part of the celebration of the Eucharist every Sabbath day. The Sabbath needs to be revitalized in many ways. And we can only revitalize it if we come and be part of it, to build up and to be in communion with one another. And over these next two years, as we prepare for the Synod of 2023, we have a wonderful opportunity to do that, where we are called to mission, where we are called to be people of God, where we are called to follow what the, the church is saying to us. We are called to communion with one another. Communion, to come together, to celebrate together, to participate, that we come together and worship together, to partake an act of participation in our faith and in our church, and to foster the mission that we go from here, from having physically been present at Holy Mass, not because it is our duty and it's our obligation, yes, at the moment the bishop has given us that dispensation, but yes, we got to say at some point we cannot just be satisfied with sitting alone and not being part of the communal church. And we've got to revitalize ourselves. And so we come here because we want to interact with one another, to be in communion with one another, to look, to participate in the Eucharist. That is not just something that happens on the altar. It's not a fact of just entertainment, but rather a fact of praise and worship. And that we open the churches again so that we can come together to be part of communion, to participate, and then be sent out on mission to go out into the world, to live out our lives according to the gospel, to be people of love, people of peace, and in that way, build the church again. We now together profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of the Flight into Egypt. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us to our Heavenly Father for what we need. On this, the patronal feast of our Archdiocese, we pray especially for Archbishop Brisbane, Bishop Sylvester, all the priests, deacons, and religious, and the, all those who serve the Church in Cape Town. We ask that more people may hear and heed the call of Jesus to follow him in the service of his people. May they, under the patronage of Mary, Bring God's people closer to Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in government, that they are mindful of their obligation to rule our country with integrity and lead us by a God good example. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. When the Holy Family came to Africa as refugees, they were not received with honor, and doubtless they suffered. We ask God to open our eyes to the suffering and needs of today's refugees in our country, and show us how we can come to their aid with love and charity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Mary and Joseph humbly listened to the angel's instruction to leave their home to save the baby Jesus from the cruelty of Herod. May we follow their example and listen with open hearts and minds to our Heavenly Father when he speaks to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember all who have gone before us especially the bishops, priests, deacons, religious and laity who were instrumental in building up God's kingdom in our archdiocese, that God in his goodness will grant them the eternal reward. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Remembering our prayers, all those involved in the consultations with the bishop's synod, as together we pray, Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Father, continue to pour out your Spirit upon your church as we journey to the Synod 2023. Grant us a new vision of your glory a new experience of your power, a new faithfulness to your word, and a new consecration to your service, so that your love may grow among us and your kingdom come. Bless our commitment to realizing a synodial church 
and to deepen our communion to fruitful mission. We pray thus through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. In a moment of silence, look into the Christ child who once took refuge on our continent. Let us give thanks for the peace and plenty in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of goodness, you are bountiful to your people. Help us to be your faithful followers in the church and in the community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Father, receive with this offering the prayers of your people, so that through the intercession of Mary, our Lady of the Flight into Egypt, we may seek to be faithful to Christ, announce his words to others, and love as brothers and sisters in your family. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, God, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this feast day of the blessed ever virgin mary for by the overshadowing of the holy spirit she conceived your only begotten son and without losing the glory of virginity brought forth into the world the eternal light jesus christ our lord through him the angel praises your majesty the minions adore and powers tremble before you heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs 
in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that you, we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernard and Saint Ignatius, and with all the saints who have con whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely upon failing hope. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the King and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. In a moment of silence we pray for peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be in. He stayed there until Herod was dead to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophets. I called my son out of Egypt. We pray now together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Blood of Christ, save me. Body of Christ, blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Lord, we have celebrated these mysteries in honor of Our Lady of the Flight in Egypt. And you have nourished us with the body and blood of your Son. May we who honor the memory of the Virgin Mary share one day in the banquet of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. We ask the Lord to be with you and to guide you and be you, offer you all his blessings. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God.